Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. And it is a fabulous Tuesday here today because it's Technique Tuesday. And we are super excited because the lovely Rebecca is going to be giving us a masterclass in nesting dyes. So if you've got some nesting dyes at home, you've been thinking, what else can I do with them? Then Bex is going to be the absolute queen at the demonstration station today. Bex, I'm very excited. I am actually. Do you know, I've really just dived into my nesting dyes. I can't believe how many we have oh, as well. Oh, I know. It's ridiculous, <gasps> isn't it? Absolutely. It's ridiculous. And all the different effects and looks that you can achieve. You know, you don't need tons of stash to create no. amazing cards with no. these. It's great for like scrap busting. Yeah. Even, I'm really excited. Oh, I can't wait to see what we're going to do. Uh, and looking after us this morning, it's the fabulous Emily. How are you, Em? I'm well, thank you. Good, 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 good. So we have got lots and lots of nesting dyes. In fact, we have got over... Oh, we, we don't have over we have 33 designs for you to choose from on the website today and they are going to be on an incredible offer but we need to take a look at this week's win it weekly first of all <laughs> Say it with style pocket pads ultimate collection two you've got all five pads from our second Say It With Style launch, up for grabs worth £24.95. We've got four lucky winners. It's very exciting, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. The possibilities with these are just endless, aren't they? They are incredible. So you're going to get all of those. Four lucky people, but they need to answer our question correctly. Are you ready for this one? It's a Halloween themed question. Oh, Bex. okay. Which of these is a traditional Halloween drink? Is it A, witch's brew? Is it B, lamb's wool? Or is it C, pumpkin juice? Oh, I don't think I've had any of these. Well, the closest I've had to pumpkin juice is probably a pumpkin spice latte. Uh, yeah, true tip. Uh, yep. At 7th of September, if anyone else is waiting. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like witch's brew is, is probably traditional. I guess that could be some kind of cocktail. Oh, I yeah. don't know. Okay. Lamb's wool feels a bit weird. Yeah, lamb's wool. I feel like it could be a bit hairy. Yeah. Look, get a little bit stuck in the throat. Yeah. Like, and that said, could we like press it yesterday? Like squeeze. Like extract the juice out of it. So, she also thought she could get pumpkin juice from Sainsbury's, but I don't believe her. I'm going to have a look. I've never heard of it. But well, I thought Sainsbury's would be the place for things that are a little bit different. Yeah, a bit quirky. And I wanted some dragon fruit juice. Oh, okay. For a cocktail, Ooh. I'd seen. And I wanted dragon fruit juice. They didn't have it. Okay. So I don't think they're going to have pumpkin juice. Maybe a bit juice. too niche. Mm. But let us know what you think the answer is. It's very, very interesting. Um, and we'll be picking four winners on Friday's show to win this incredible bundle. Um, okay, are you ready for an absolutely astonishing deal that we've got for you today so we have got for you buy one get one free on all of our moonstone nesting dies is it any moonstone dies it's just nesting dies nesting. nesting just check him um so obviously your cheapest one is free i think some are 19.99 i think some maybe 14.99 so it's always going to be your cheapest one that you're going to get for free personally i'd always go for two at the same price then you're maximizing that offer always um there are 33 to choose from um and I'm just reading what I've just said. Your cheapest dye is free. Okay, we're gonna look through them. Um, so we have got a Tornage Nesting Tags. I love this one. Mm. So this is them all cut out and all layered. I mean, how cool does that look as an effect on Doesn't its own? It? Without anything else, you know, you could be doing this out of your little books. You could be doing it out of maybe some papers and things like that. There's just so much you can do with them. Um, the contents will vary, <coughs> obviously depending on the space that we have and the amount of metal we can fit in so this one has got nine cutting dies in there yeah um but obviously some do vary some are a little bit more awkward like our hearts here um to try and get them in so that one has got eight in um we do have some boards as well that i'll show you in a moment for the next one so we've got our stars i love the stars i cannot believe how much i actually use this one i know me too Absolutely. it is amazing that one has got 10 uh, dies in there um, we have got our straight edge nesting dies long decorative label which you've got eight dies in there it's going to give you that really cool shape um, we have got 
a really simple one but again a really useful one i saw yeah. you using this one yesterday it's like yes. it's so useful isn't it it really is it just gives you a fancy effect that you just can't achieve with your your trimmer or fussy cutting yeah, definitely you know, it's and it's just precision every time isn't it absolutely and it just turns a simple card it just steps it up a little yeah, notch doesn't it definitely you have got your rounded corner rectangles oh. so again just giving you a little bit of a different look on top of your regular rectangles We've got our scallop circles, again, another really versatile one that you will use so much because we all know that circles are impossible to cut out freehand, let alone a scallop circle. Yeah. We've got that beautiful ornate label. This one features quite a lot within our topper collections. You'll notice this shape quite often, so it's perfect to use alongside um, your topper collections if you want to maybe make your shape cards and things like that. We've got our bracket label as well, again, another popular shape. Um, just perfect for just jazzing up a little bit. You've got your uh, rectangles. Now this one is great if you want to do like your pyramage effect like we've got on here, um, but maybe you don't have a trimmer, you can't use the trimmer, you can't create it the same way, and obviously you've got your dies to do it for you. Um, we have got our squares. Again, same kind, kind of idea. And if I turn this over, you can see how tight they are as well. So for mats and layers, yeah. You know, it's going to give you that perfect kind of border, isn't it, all the way around? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, oh. love, love, love the church window. Now, if you're going to be watching uh, Natalie this afternoon over on Hobby Baker, she is going to be using this to give this a completely different look. We've got it there, obviously, with a wedding theme card. Imagine using this at Christmas. Yeah. But Natalie's going to use that with Halloween this afternoon. And it looks amazing. So oh, think kind of like how you can use the, these dies in other ways. Uh, this one is your Baroque label. This one is our stitch die as well. So if I turn this around so you can see the detail a little bit better, you have got your stitch detail and it is a duo stitch. So what that means is when you cut your shape out, it's gonna give you that stitch detail on your die cut, but it's also gonna leave that stitch detail on your card you cut it out of as well. So if you're cutting apertures and things like that, um, the card on the front there has actually been made using that die so using your nesting dies to create shape cards is another kind of top tip that you know you maybe forget about yeah definitely um, and then we've got the inverted corner square but with the stitch detail again i mean look at that pyramid it looks like well it's it's any page isn't it? it looks incredible absolutely amazing um we have got our dual stitch squares look how simple that looks you can just see that stitch detail on there beautiful it's fabulous isn't it mm. really really is beautiful and then we have our wood grain nesting frames so we have got the wood grain circles if i just show you that detail in fact if i turn this one around oh, do you know i forgot about these i know way. aren't they amazing yeah you've actually got wood grain detail that kind of like debosses into your card yeah. so you can use this to create such amazing effects it is wonderful um we also have for you i love these our lovely lace nesting dies we've got our rectangles with that beautiful lacy edge we've got um our wood grain rectangles oh so pretty they're amazing aren't they let me turn that around you can really see that wood grain on there it's awesome um, and then we've got our lacy circles as well. So, so pretty, so delicate, aren't they? They're oh, just yeah. beautiful. Uh, let me show you a couple of the boards as well that Emily's managed to dig out of the uh, the dungeon. Look at oh. these. <laughs> they're, they're a little, little bit, I mean, you can't see the, um, the dog ears on here, Em, you're fine. Um, look at these. They're fabulous, aren't they? I absolutely love it. You've got your hearts, your diamonds, your hexagons and your stars on there. And then this one, this one's a whopper. Look at all Ooh. these. It shows you all of those fancy labels. So your ornate label, your bracket labels, your vintage label, your fancy label. They just look amazing, don't they? Don't I, they I just I love just looking at them like this. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm don't easily they, pleased. They look incredible like they that. They do, don't they? So dimensional yeah, as well. Yeah, they're fabulous. So, Bex, yeah. we are coming to you now. Okay. What are we doing? Right, well, we've got loads of techniques to get through, so we'll okay. just plow on through. If there's anything anybody wants oh, yeah? to see. Any questions? Yeah, let us know, let us know. And I'm kind of going to start from, you know, beginner level upwards. Okay. Anybody can use dies. Yeah. Okay, so 
like I say, just basic stash essentials. I've got some card blanks, I've got some cardstock here, and I've brought in a few uh, different bits and pieces. Okay, so let's start first of all, and we'll just do like probably the most basic as it comes um sort of label on here so we're going to use this one like i say i dug this out yesterday and i was like oh i've forgotten how much i enjoy these um few tools that you might need low tack tape yeah and probably i'd say a dye brush as well yeah always useful always useful so we're just going to take that onto here this is in our card blank so i'm going to show you one you know sort of two in one effects here one how you can create like the basic shape and just simply use it and then the other how we can make an aperture onto our card so we've got a six by six card blank here we're just going to simply press that on and then we're going to cut that out so if you've never seen die cutting before or you're just joining us um you'll just sort of know how these work and so we're just going to pop that in the center of our card we're going to open our card blank because if you if we put it in closed it mm -hmm. will the we've all done it. Yeah, <laughs> and we've all done that. We've been there. It will cut through both layers, um, which, you, you know, you, you probably don't you want. You might want that. You might. You might. On most occasions, you absolutely don't. <laughs> no, no, most of the time, no. Okay, so we're going to put that onto there, onto the magnetic sheet. We'll pop the, uh, the base plate on top, and then we're going to use our Gemini 2. It's fairly new, this it one. It is, we yeah. We all love it, so we're going to do that because it's so effective for die cutting. It is amazing um so we're just going to pop that simply through okay perfect oh you can see that's cut beautifully already you really really can absolutely so we're just going to lift that off we're just going to again just gently lift our tape up if you tend to find that your cardstock wants to sort of peel off it's really good to take a bit of lint off the tape before you stick yeah, it down. Yeah, definitely. So with the, the Gemini 2 particularly, it's very strong. Very good. There's a lot of pressure in that machine. So what it does is it kind of makes your tape even stickier. Yeah, it does. Absolutely. Another tip is to try and just put your tape on the inside of the bit you're going to, would be the waist. Yes, absolutely. Um, but yeah, it is. It, it's a hazard, isn't it? You think like low tack tape, and then as soon as it gets that pressure, it just makes it like super sticky. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, it's even took it a little bit off of there, but it's fine because you'll see the technique. And obviously because I wanted to show off the aperture and the solid, I was yeah. like, where am I gonna put my tape? Yeah, no, it makes it tricky, doesn't it? That, yeah, definitely. Again, I also like to use like the scoopy little bit of my dye brush to gently lift away yeah. that tape as well. It's, it, you know, it's a super, super good tip. So again, let me just grab this. Let's see, I think it might come a bit better away from this side. Um, but yeah, Abby, absolutely. If you've got a strong machine and you're going through cardstock like this, um, do absolutely take a bit of that lint off. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely stuck for dear life. Um, <laughs> it's typical, isn't it? Always, it just never behaves. So obviously we've got our beautiful aperture in there and then whatever you stick behind that is going to show yeah. through. So whether that's an insert, let's get the trim me as well. Oh, that would be cute. Wouldn't it be cute? Yeah. So obviously, you know, you're going to be able to put that once you've cut it down, you're going to be able to put that underneath it, yeah. etc. It's going to look so, so good. We'll move on um, and then I'll, like I say, I'll show you. If we just press out, these tend to be a bit easier if they've got sticky tape on because um it you know you can sort of peel them off this way as well and really just gently gently lift it really has stuck down it has, this hasn't one it? yeah it's just um just one of those things it does happen it's just typical so behavior and typical behavior. Um, we have had a question from let me find it again because i've lost you Oh no. Okay. You can't be far away because it wasn't that long ago that I saw it. So I think we're going to use, let's see if I've got, I wonder if I've got the nice um, label one in my stash here. I think I do. Uh, I can't find it now. So it was a question about the size of the rectangle. Um, it was, I think it was from, I want to say Midge was the name asking about the um the rectangle that we have is like a tall skinny one. Oh yeah and asking if we could do like why we don't do like a six by four kind of ratio and um, that is absolutely something we can look at if our yeah. fantastic stacy is listening or watching today um we can put that to her she is in charge of everything 
die base. Absolutely. Okay, so shape card blanks, another really easy one for us to do. What you need to do, we're going to grab um, our gorgeous, again, we're sticking with the stitch theme. We're going to grab a five by seven landscape card here. Mm -hmm. We're going to grab our die, and this is a really easy technique to do, and it's so fancy. All you do is find sort of the closest in size to your die, which, like yeah. I say, for me is the five by seven with this one. Pop it on, and you'll see, obviously, there's a little bit sticking out over that score mm -hmm. line. You want that because then that will include the you know the whole thing. Um, so we're going to tape it on here, and again, just because the tape was being a bit tricksy, we popped it right to the edge here because all of this is going to be cut away. Yeah. Um, so again, we'll just dab some lint off of there and pop it just again, just very gently on there. Now this is where we want our card to stay close together. We want it to cut through all our layers, so we're yeah. going to keep it closed. So again, we'll just pop this onto our magnetic plate. Keep it closed. Yes. <laughs> just literally just <laughs> said that, haven't I? Okay. And then we're going to go through. <laughs> Keep it closed, Keep guys. Keep it closed. Shape card blanks. <laughs> They're so much fun to make, they though, are, aren't they? Because it just opens up so many opportunities for different shapes, different styles of cards. Yeah. And if you're thinking, well, this is great, but what about my mats and layers? You've got all the other coordinating sizes. So to be able to do, do that, absolutely. So you can just see how that's coming away. Obviously, you'll sort of know whether it might need another go or not. I'm thinking it just might need a, one another more pass. go, just another little press. Sometimes it just needs to go in a different direction, a doesn't it? Absolutely. And, I was know just about to say, don't you? yeah. What we're going to do is we're going to turn it 90 degrees and cut it through again. So we'll just pop that through again because some some areas had cut like straight out and then others were just a little bit it's just pressure points on the machine isn't mm. it and every machine is different you get to you get used to your own don't you you do you absolutely do yeah you really really do okay so that's cut out a lot better for me now perfect so again we'll just sort of gently gently remove our tape here and like I say, we can be a bit, we can just yeah. take that off of there. But look at that, what that's left you as well. If you're maybe wanting to use it as like a stencil, you want to ink around it, create some lovely yes. fancy edges. Yes, absolutely, 100%. So again, we're just going to gently take this tape off. <laughs> and then pop that off of there. Oh, it looks fabulous, And then we've it? got our absolutely beautiful shaped card blank there for you. I love and that. And you can just see how nice that's going to be. Obviously, this is where the score line is here. Um, so it just opens and closes like that. And obviously, you can mat and layer over yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. Just put another panel over the top. Yeah. Absolutely. Another panel over the top. You're absolutely fine. If you want to be even fancier, you can get your scoreboard out. This is a great shape to do this one with, actually, because you've got those lines oh, got parallel. Yeah. So we're just going to center up our card. Going to kind of just make sure we're there. And then obviously if we score across it, we can turn that into either a fold back or an easel. So obviously this would be it as a fold back here. Cute. Super cute, isn't it? Especially yeah. in that shape as well. Or it could be either a reverse easel um, or you can fold it this way here as well and use like it as, as the more traditional yeah. style easel. And again, because these nesting dies work so perfectly, you can do your mats and layers yeah. on top of that so, so easily. Okay, let's see what else we've got to work with. Oh, we're gonna do frames next, I okay. think. You just tell me when you need to come back to me. Oh my goodness. Because otherwise we'll be with you all, all day. This is fine, we've got <laughs> absolutely tons of techniques to show off. Let's get a... Let's get one of our rectangle dies. Again, I'm thinking the stitched again. I just love them so much. So again, your nesting dies. Um, like I say, let's, let's actually go for something in the packaging because I'll show you how they work. So they work just like this. This is our ovals. Let's use these. These are so pretty. 
again, ovals. How hard are they to cut out? Especially getting, you oh. know, you'd never be able to fussy cut these. I wouldn't even attempt to I cut wouldn't. an oval. So, and again, the, with the nesting dies, they're so handy because you can choose what size that you want. If you're doing big cards, you might want to go for these top sizes. If you're doing small ones, you want to go. It just gives you so much flexibility. This one's got 10 metal dies included in the ovals. So we're going to take, let's take two and three out. And then this will make, like I say, if we use these together, they'll make mats and layers absolutely fine. However, if we use them one inside the other, mm -hmm. that's going to make us a frame. Gorgeous. Which, again, if you're doing apertures on your card, you can then pop a frame on top of yeah. it. Um, so much to do. So we'll pop this frame on here and then, again, get a little bit further into it. It is like you've got to kind of do it by eye, haven't you? Your magnetic sheet can help here if you, you know, because yeah. they can kind of hold them in place for you. But it is, um, it is just kind of guesswork getting them lined up to create that frame. Absolutely. And you might want to skip one and have a really yeah. nice chunky frame, yeah. uh, which you obviously absolutely can do. And it'll still be the same shape and size and it'll still look absolutely beautiful. Um, so let's pop that in. We've got some of our gorgeous like olive mirror in there. It's such an amazing color. Oh, it's my favorite. It's my I love favorite. It. I thought we'd run out and I was like, I was what? trying to pick another colour and I was like, oh no, there's one sheet that I'm having that. That's we are not okay in. with this, it cannot run out. No. Okay. Oh, that's cut out beautifully as well for me. Oh, I love it. So again, yeah, me too. So we've got our frame here. Let's go around this side again. But you're just doing maybe different colours of your Miri and doing those little, those ovals coming in in the frames, it would look so cute, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Absolutely. We can definitely see if we've got some more colours and we can do that. Obviously this layer, again, it's a perfect matte and layer. Keep yeah. it, pop it in your storage boxes. Yes, yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so let's just see if we have, uh, again, let's do like a gold one. Ooh. And again, we'll do a little smaller one. And again, you can just see how you can make those really, let's go a couple of sizes lower this time. And in fact, we will skip a die so I can show you what that chunkier frame oh, yeah. looks like. And then you'll get a real sort of difference with that. So let's go in with this one and this one. Yeah, see, again, you can just see how much chunkier that's looking. Again, we'll get some of our low tack tape on here. To be honest, you don't even need to take take your dies down. It just depends. Like some, some it depends. Again, you get to know your machine. Sometimes they move around a lot more than other times. Okay, so we'll cut this gold one out now. Something a little bit chunkier. But yeah, they, they really are just ever so handy. So again, let's grab that. Oh, this is looking so cute. Oh, it's fab, isn't it? Isn't it just? Again, let's get this layer out here first. And then we'll grab this one. And again, you can see the difference in that sort of chunkiness yeah. there. Uh, but yeah, like you say, you can stack those you up. Could you could just be creating really cool backgrounds. Couldn't you? Yeah. Absolutely, you don't need anything else. So let's see if we can, um, I'll show you how to do shakers as well actually, because that's a really good skill with these. And obviously you can do them in any shape. So I'm just gonna see if we've got some acetate in here, which we do. So obviously you can use any of your nesting dies for this. You just make a frame, super, mm -hmm. super simple. And then we want some red tape for this. I love making shakers, they're one oh, of my favourites. We um, we talked yesterday, so I was using the four mil foam pads and I was like, and I had to cut them into little strips. I was like, oh, I'm gonna ask Adam if we can get four mil strips, so he's looking into it. I emailed it, him when I came out. It's being looked into, isn't it? Yeah. It's very exciting. Because how 
good our four mil strips going to be for shaker cards oh my goodness yes because it will you know that's the thing It'll isn't just give it everything a little bit more room to shake around yeah a bit more movement absolutely and again if you're someone that likes to use nice you know you might want to use glitter for shaker you can use absolutely anything if you are someone that likes to use maybe really chunky shaker elements yeah such as die cuts maybe like little metal charms or something that four it's, mil is going to make such a it, difference yeah it does Okay, so we've got some red tape all the way around on my oval. So we're just going to lift that up. Again, our die brush, super, super handy for lifting the backing off this little bit of tape because it's very, very high tack. We've done quite a skinny frame as well. Um, so there's a little bit less room there. Um, so again, we're just going to peel the backing away from here. Perfect, and that's the whole thing done. So we're gonna find our acetate. We're gonna go quite close to the edge, but covering everything, because we need that to remain fully closed mm. once we get our shaker in place. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna simply cut round here. And because we've die cut this out of Miri, it gives us a really nice sort of chunky kind of place to cut round. Um, you'll find this when you are die cutting that it once you've cut it out stuck it down you can fussy cut round it so yeah. easily it's just it's almost like it's been raised so again we're just gonna just go around with our scissors just get underneath that die and then again we'll just cut this little this last little corner off here stacy is um is having a look she's gonna make a list of requests for nesting die yes. so um i saw midge's comment about the kind of six by four and then i saw someone saying maybe start a seven by five and go down to six by four. Oh, that'd be cool um so she's gonna make a list so if there's any other requests any other shapes or things that you think we could do let us know it's crazy isn't it because yeah. i think we've got so many and you think we've got something covered and then a new one will come oh, out yeah, and I'm like, oh another yeah one, another one that we've added to the list already Absolutely. this morning um, there's just so many shapes. <laughs> there, there really is. Who knew? Um, so I'm going to just turn this into a little card just so we've got something to put our shaker on. So okay. we're not doing anything fancy. We've just done some matte and layers. Again, I'm pretty sure some of your rectangles and squares will already be card sizes. Um, but we'll just do it with our trimmer just for now. So just for speed. Okay, so this is going to be our card. It's quite autumnal. We've got that beautiful olive mirror, and then we'll finish up on this one and we'll have a look at some more goodies that we've got. So we're going to pop that onto there just to mat and layer that absolutely beautifully. Our oval is going to be the absolute star of the show. And we are now going to turn this die cut nesting die into a, uh, a shaker. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some of our really handy little foam pad strips here um, again. These are the two mil ones, but they're still absolutely wonderful. So we're going to just turn it around here and keep going. What I like to do is I like to really butt them up edge to edge so that you can be absolutely yeah. confident that nothing's going to spill out. Again, we've all been there. Especially like sequins aren't as bad, but glitters. Glitter you oh, need really tight. Yeah, you really do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you really do not want to be um, getting that everywhere you know especially if you spent a lot of time making yeah. your card um okay so again another great tip when we're making shakers with our nesting dies quick little go over with the anti-static bag um just to again just get rid of any hand oils and ensure like really nice movement mm -hmm. around the card okay so i'm going to take the backing off of here we've kind of got our background I'm kind of thinking that again might look really good this way up i can't decide it's absolutely you beautiful. Go either way can't you i know yeah. those butterflies are going in all sorts of directions so the flowers, aren't they yeah. uh mid just suggested balloons that would balloons? be cute, wouldn't it oh like that would balloons. be cool um and shall they uh, said that the church windows don't seem to be on offer them whoops that's quite a lot okay so we'll go with those ones and then we'll just simply stick that on top and again you could use absolutely anything look at them they're already sparkling there. they're so pretty <laughs> go all the way around with your fingers first of all 
and then Ooh. obviously that is oh, oh and they're so fun for kids yeah I, anyone appreciates a shaker uh, you don't uh, have to be a child you don't absolutely <laughs> not um so i'll sort of clear up and get ready okay, for the no. next technique no problem well i have got an incredible deal for you so if you've been on the website and had a little cheeky look you will have spotted this already right look at this <gasps> beautiful Ooh, limited edition rainbow ombre adorable scorable 10 a4 sheets two pounds 99 so they're all the same they're all going to be the same but just two pounds 99 for 10 sheets of this look at it it's so gorgeous i mean i love a rainbow rainbow anything it's i just think the color selection is gorgeous imagine this Imagine die cutting a sentiment like across here oh, yeah. and getting all of that fabulous colour or doing it like across here and just getting that gorgeous ombre multicoloured finish. It's going to look amazing. £2.99. It is absolutely insane price. If you haven't already added this to your basket, just do it because it's just stunning. It really, really, really is, is beautiful. Um, it's in the same category with the, the die, so you can just head over to the website and grab it. Um, nice and easy to find. But we do, believe it or not, we do have more dies to share with you as well that we haven't seen yet. So let me get the, the rest of the stash. Um, I love diamonds as well. Yeah, I use me this too. one so much again a really tricky shape to try and cut out if you were going to cut this like with a trimmer yeah because it's getting those angles correct isn't it it's not just a square on its side no. it's an actual diamond so it's really tricky um 11 dies in that one there oh your hexagons as well use this so, a lot too so great for background yeah it is incredible isn't it whether you're going for like a honeycomb effect whether you're going for a patchwork effect um, it really is fantastic. 12 dies in that one there. You've got absolutely loads. That's You've amazing. got your rounded corner square. You look how that works, just offsetting them and turning them around um, to create that different effect there. We've got our straight edge nesting circles, Ooh. our absolute hero. We love our circles. We're going to demonstrate this technique Ooh. that's on the card model. Oh, how exciting. Yeah, I just saw that then and I was like, oh, a little sneaky peek. We've got our scallops corner rectangles it's very cute we have got our straight edge no uh, novels our straight edge ovals uh, which is the one that Bex has just used to create that fabulous shaker card we've got our vintage label oh so pretty I love that one it's almost like a plaque isn't it it's fabulous it's really cool yeah we have got our torn edge vintage label I will show you these cut out in a moment because I have all the torn edge ones on a little board we've got a torn edge fancy label and these give you that torn edge like a little bit of a deckle edge however yes. you want to, to kind of look at it now these um i also love these are our scalloped and straight in one set so if i turn that around you can see you're going to get the straight edge and then you get the scalloped edge so if you want to do your straight edge out of your like little book or something yeah. and then you do your scallop out of mirror it gives you that really cool matte and layer every time so that is your um squares and then we're going back to our torn edge we've got our ovals look at those piggies oh. <laughs> so cute and um, we've got our circles love those um we have got our lace ovals let me show you that with that beautiful lacy edge look at those corners as well you I can know. chop into them yeah. can't you absolutely and then we've also got the rectangles there as well really really beautiful um, absolutely love 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 those um, let me show you these little boards that we have of the the torn edge ones look how cool they look they look awesome they're amazing aren't they they just add a little bit of interest a little bit of something different to your cards so if you're you know you maybe you've got squares and circles and rectangles and ovals already and you just want something a little bit different then add the torn edge ones to your stash because they will just bring something a little bit fancy absolutely they can give you that kind of distressed look they can give you that deco look they can give you that vintage look you know anything at all and um, they're just fantastic and they're all buy one get one free remember as well your cheapest one is your free one so if you're adding um a 19.99 set to your basket 
um, and you had a 14.99 set to your basket, it's the 14.99 set that's gonna be free. So maximize that offer, get yourself two 19.99 ones or yeah. two 14.99 ones so that you're, you're not losing out basically. I know it's free, but still, you wanna get the most, yeah, don't you? Yeah, it gets the biggest value, isn't yeah, it? The biggest definitely. saving. Uh, okay, we're coming back to you then now. Okay, so we've got our torn edge ones and we've got our hearts ones, but let's demonstrate the the technique that I said, oh, we're gonna demonstrate that one. Okay, so this one's a really nice, easy one to put together. Nesting dies are also great with things that are ombre or yeah. anything like that. So we've got our, our sort of rainbow ombre here as well and this because you can, again, you can just do all your mats and layers in a nice order. So we've gone with our duo colour pad, which is an ombre, but I thought these four shades really kind of give you that ombre look. Um, so we've gone for like a nice rich burgundy going into the sort of crimson red here um, onto our colour palette. So what we're going to do is, I'll show you how that I've done this. So we've got a mirror matte and layer at six by six. Mm -hmm. We've then gone minus quarter an inch okay. on each one. So this is five and three quarters squared. This is five and a half, five and a quarter. And then lastly, we've got our little dinky five by five, sort of like I say, scarlet crimson one here. So we're going to lay all these out. We're not going to touch our gold but we're going to lay all these out on the mat and then we're going to go with our nesting die mm. hearts these are beautiful we have got the torn edge ones coming up um that you've just shown us Anne Marie. Mm -hmm. but we'll just start with these ones so what we're going to do is we're going to start with my largest one uh, and i'll just get a bit more tape because i've used all of that roll i do use my hearts a lot as well i do as well they're just perfect aren't they you know if you've got like just anything romantic occasion you know you might i don't have a lot of weddings or engagements to craft for but when one comes around i'm like i haven't got anything whereas actually you can just use a heart use really heart. simple yeah. and it's yeah. just so effective again they just save the day don't they are nesting dies so we're just going to just pop these onto here and then again just go down the layers as you go into the smaller layers use the smaller dies so we're going here on this one. We kind of want them quite centrally for this technique. And then, <laughs> and then we'll That's get our last, hard. our little hearts on here as well. Okay. Yeah, we want that one to be in the center here. Okay, so let's get these run through the machine. Should be nice and straightforward. And I'll grab the plates just on here. And I'm going to try and see if we can sneak into it at a time, and then that's a little bit less there. Yeah. Perfect. A little bit less time consuming for me. Okay, so let's pop those through. It's going to take Emily ages to put all them dies back. I know, it actually is. <laughs> <laughs> There's millions of them. Okay. Perfect, and then we'll just go in with the last two layers. I'm excited to see this. Uh, me too. I think it should be a, a really nice card, actually. Oh, here we go. We've got our last little two layers here. Okay, perfect. Right, so let's just pop all of these hearts out. Again, we'll just be nice and gentle on here. Well, let's get our layers done first of all, because they're the ones that we need the most. Okay, perfect. So we'll just get these off of here. And again, this is just so great because like I say, nesting dies do give you that two in one option, especially if you are, you are using the sort of negative or the aperture yeah. part of the card as well. And this sort of brings in that aperture technique as well. Um, so we're just going to grab, grab those. Okay, so again, we've got our solid shapes here. So again, this is how perfectly they mat and layer. You don't even need to really think about it. You know, obviously you've got that as a topper, or again, you could stick those on a card blank. 
absolutely want. And let's get a little bit of a bigger one. And again, you could sort of scatter them around and make a background. So, so, so versatile. Um, but we're going to bring back in our aperture layers. And this is the technique that I want to show. So what we are actually going to do is we're going to stack Ooh, them all this. up. I love this technique. It's so fun, yeah. isn't it? And we're going to stack them all up from the largest to the smallest. It looks so cool with the colours particularly. Doesn't it just? Yeah, it's a nice colour palette. I, I was definitely feeling, even though it's sunny and warm outside, I was definitely thinking, are we ready to see a change of season? Well, it likes to keep us on our toes, doesn't it? So like on Friday, yeah. I was like, yep, yeah, September the 1st, I'm going to put my little Halloween wreath up, like my autumn Halloween yeah, wreath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Because I've got a summer one that was like dried flowers and they're very dry now. Oh, okay. So I was like, oh, I'm going to swap it over. And then Saturday, it was like glorious. And I'm like, I feel a bit silly putting yeah. this up now. So. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't know what it wants to do at the minute. You know, we've had such a funny summer, haven't we? I was we? really cold last week at home. Like, there was a couple of evenings. I was like, I'm actually really cold. I Me think too. I might put my dressing gown on. Me too. <laughs> The best way to do this technique is to put glue right on the edges of your small layers and layer up because obviously you can move it around, get yeah. it lined up perfectly and you're not worrying about getting any glue right. You don't want to be gluing on these edges where your die cuts are going to go. So again, we just sort of manoeuvre that around, we use construction glue for this purpose exactly. And again, I think we're just going to move it up a little bit anyway. If you've always got some overhang, you can always just chop that up. To be honest, it's going to be covered anyway by the time we go into our next layer. So this is now the next smallest layer. So we want to go again just onto these corners, round our edges with the construction glue and just keep moving that around. So again, we're just going to position that there. Plenty of wiggle in that glue. And again, this is starting to really build up now. And then our last layer is just going to absolutely Ooh, just beautifully bring everything. Absolutely, isn't it? That looks a bit brown, doesn't it? It's. It, I promise it is a really nice burgundy. <laughs> um, just must be the lights playing a bit of havoc. Um, so we've got, again, just going to put that glue just gently over the sides here. And we'll stick that on top of here. And again just getting that perfectly into place and then this is where we can snip off any last little bits of overhang and then we can put our sort of like miri in there uh, again just a little bit of overhang on this side obviously once we've got this in place um, and papers is a really nice thing to use with this technique because it stops it being really bulky yes um, yeah papers are just absolutely perfect for this job obviously you can use i've made it out of cardstock and it is fine but you are going to get those those layers again if you are using papers and you want a bit of dimension you could just use bone pads in between yeah, every layer yeah again keep them really nice and tight keep them away from that aperture um and you'll be absolutely fine so we're going to put this on here and then that's just a nice, sweet and simple little card. Oh, but we're going to get a gorgeous gold heart in the middle. Gorgeous gold heart in the middle. Yeah, I thought that. I was like, it has to be Miri in the middle. That gorgeous so shine. Cool. So nice, isn't it? We've got a nice chunky border. And then we're just going to... I just felt weird not doing a card today. So I've just popped a little sentiment on with our combo dies. But I thought I'll use something die cut and then... We're having a little uh, moonstone moment. Yeah, Jackie's just said, um, I've got loads of dies that I've not used, so I think a die cutting day is in order. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Try out these techniques, and we're just going to have that just over there. Cute. And we'll pop that onto our card. And then I think we're going to dive into our torn edge. Ooh. And a little book. Very excited. So exciting. Okay, so we're going to put that on here. Again, you could just finish this off. You know, you could put some gemstones. Yeah. You could finish off your sentiment in there. I just sort of wanted to make it into a card, but still have it nice and speedy. So that's your sort of, almost like your negative aperture layers on yes. there. And like I say, you've still got 
all of the die cut shapes there to play yeah. with as well two in one Definitely. absolutely fabulous that is what's so good about the nesting dies isn't, isn't it, 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 it does that for you it does it absolutely does it's so flat they just they give you so much flexibility okay right let's go in with our torn edge circles that you've just shown and we're going to go in with our little book of delightful birds because we all love this one don't we and we're going to go in we're going to get two pages of our this page here and again we've got these beautiful sort of like kingfishers on so i'm just going to see which die i need to start with first of all i think it might be this one that's a good guess wasn't it perfect fit yeah um okay so just going to gently take this on here just onto the sides and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to old i'm going to alternate my dies okay across the two pages i'm thinking this should work and then these other three again i should be able to get both of these in as well yeah are going to go in here and then this is going to make that sort of piramage look okay now, we do sell piramage toppers but they're obviously very specific yeah. aren't they yeah if you, you might make your own yeah you yeah. want to make your own absolutely again it's just a great stash buster you might have little books that you know you're wanting to just get away from that like matting and layering you want to step it up um not that there's anything wrong with doing that but you might just want to sort of delve further mm -hmm. into how you can get more use out of them and die cutting is obviously a great option with little books um so we're going to just pop both of these through the machine okay just opens up more options doesn't it for your little books once you've got like these kind of dies in your stash 100 yeah, percent, absolutely 100 percent. because again you could just be using them in so many different ways so let's pop that in the machine now That just makes me so happy to just <laughs> see that die cut in. Absolutely <laughs> perfect. Okay, so let's go with this one. And then I'm just gonna just gently remove that away from like the main page. Susan is loving all the hints and tips this morning. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Good, good, good. This is what we like to hear. It is what we like to hear. So we're gonna pop all all our layers out just nice and gently <laughs> come on they're coming <laughs> just a little bit sticky this morning um okay so we'll just get this last one out and then same again for our other set here so we've just used two little book pages here mm -hmm. so so nice obviously if you want to you could just um you know so much you probably just get away with just using one i i do depends what you want to go for doesn't it like the kind of look yeah 100 percent um okay susan said she's just got back from a holiday she's already tempted with the torn edge nesting dies oh you need them they're so again you can tear cardstock everybody knows that but to get it in those perfect mats and layers yeah. that really neat finish doing all these techniques you can't really no. do that freehand like your circles you just couldn't do that no way with those perfect rings no. in absolutely not so now we've got all our pieces we kind of want to get them in order and from so say from like the the largest to the smallest and we want to sort of layer them up. So okay. again, we're going to use some foam pads. I want those skinny strips again. And what we want to do is just go right to the edge. Um, Cause again, we don't want to go anywhere near this aperture. It's kind of similar to the other one. We want to leave those middle pieces yeah. nice and free. And then I think we've just got one more technique that I had in mind for this. Oh, Susan has oh, said, does dies. anyone have any ideas for triangle nesting dies? We don't do a triangle, but that would be really cool for backgrounds, like a geometric yeah. kind of background. Um, you can actually chop your diamonds in you half. Can. Yeah, you yeah. can chop your diamonds in half to create triangles. Uh, Julia said Christmas trees. You can make Christmas trees out of triangles. Yeah. Um, that's it as well. And if you've not got very many Christmas dies, it's amazing. Circles can be baubles. Yeah. Triangles and diamonds can be trees. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the stars are really Christmassy as well. 
Um, so don't think, you know, you have to have a really good stash of like Christmas dies and birthday dies. You know, these shapes can be turned into, you know, squares into presents. Yeah, definitely. Just, Just gonna tie some that. ribbon around them. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we're just going to get that in there and then we're just going to just need to move that. But I think it's really stuck. I have got a, I have got a backup one, though, to be fair, because <laughs> I, I thought this would happen. OK, perfect. Right, let's go again. <laughs> just a little bit. Everything's just been it a bit sticky okay, this morning. Yeah, I couldn't see that it wasn't quite right. It's definitely worth, again, I don't like to get my head in the way and it's definitely worth getting right in there yeah. to make sure it's lined up. Maybe a uh, purple glue stick on your phone pads. Oh, give yeah. Give it a wiggle ring as well. Does give you that just bit of wiggle just time. Just that time, doesn't it? It just yeah, removes that instant grab. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? Absolutely. And and some, again, some phone pads are just stickier than others. Yeah. It's a bit like your low tack tape. So, again, we'll just whiz this back in off. And we'll get this topper all built up. Okay. I guess it depends on who's putting the sticky in. You know, if someone's been a bit generous with just the sticky. Just been a bit generous that day. <laughs> There we go, that's perfect. Right, let's carry on. So again, we'll just get all of these foam padded up. I love that. I'm just feeling generous today. It's They're all sticky. Just make everything a bit stickier. Yeah, uh, Karen said she wants to glue stick over the top of the foam pads Ooh, and, I'm gonna and be, tape to make it easier to move if needed. I am definitely gonna be uh, pinching that tip. Okay. Yeah, get you glue. I've, I, to be honest, if you're gentle, I have actually used construction glue for bits and pieces like that as well. Yeah, definitely. Tends to be when I'm inking as well. If you've got an inked background and you're putting foam pads on, um, again, just a bit of glue stick because your ink will like repel a bit yes. of glue. Oh, okay. this is looking so cool. Isn't it just? He's looking so handsome. And again, we've got three more layers to do. So I will build them all up for you and you can see how like I say, like how much dimension it gives you. Um, but again, I think there was another card as well, like the one with those cute little pigs that had been pyramid yeah, as well. Yeah, that was really cute. And this is it, just keep your packaging for those ideas. Yeah, definitely. So again, let's go, that's a oh. bit more like, there we go. And then these are solid layers, but we still wanna kind of go around yeah. the outside because there's nothing for them to stick onto here. So we're just going to sort of keep that technique of, of just round the outside on here. Well, Susan is asking when the, when our offer ends, and I haven't said, I don't think. Oh, Do we know when? Sunday. Oh, they're on, all, they're on the rest of the week? Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, there we go, little baby bird. And then this one, obviously, that is going on top of a solid edge, so we can pop a little circle or a square or something on there. So just put this little button one on. Okay, so that mm -hmm. is so our cute. sort of pyramage top all that. made. Isn't it Two fab? Two sheets of your little book. Two, yeah, that's wow. all we've got, absolutely. And we still had some little borders left. So you got, you know, if oh, you want to turn that into a card, yeah. it's super, super cute. I'd probably cut that as well yeah, so that like it reaches both sides, yeah. a little banner. You know, and then you've got that just perfect topper on there. Again, you can raise that up with some foam pads. Uh, and this is the back. So again, we'd want to be maybe keeping to this side yeah. um, and popping that on there. Have got time for one more? Uh, for me, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Are we okay to do one more, Em? Because I thought I've not used that rainbow mirror, uh, rainbow mirror, rainbow oh. adorable yet. Yeah. yeah. Okay, right, let's go. Let's find, again, I think I want a piece of ink me for this. We can use a bit of a card blank. And I think we're going to get the stars out for this one. Because this is just going to look magical with it's some gonna stars. It's going to look fabulous. So nice, isn't it? And again, we're going to make a sort of background with this. Okay, so let me just find my stars. Uh, let's have a look. I'm surrounded by Where nesting dyes. If not, we can. Uh, there'll be another shape that will definitely. Ah, I can see them. I can see them. I can see, you can see them poking out. Yeah, just that little edge of my star. Okay, so 
Um, I'm going to go for like maybe some of like my smaller ones and I'm going to put them all around on that ink me and create a background. So again, two in one, um, we're going to sort of get that aperture look. We're going to have all these stars on here. We're going to make a background Cute. and you can also use this as a stencil as well. Yeah, definitely. So if you want to make your own sort of stencils, this is the way to do it. So yeah, let's put those four on. Might sneak another little one up I there. Say, fifth one would make me happier. Yeah, see, it's uh, threes yeah. and fives, isn't it? I know. Yeah, I think we're going to use this one again up there. That's okay. That's all right. Yeah, we're not we're not going to upset <laughs> anyone today. <laughs> it's definitely a bit better. Again, yeah, definitely. Okay, so I'll pop this on here. Just going to take the lint off this tape. It's not going to be pesky. I hope not. Okay, and then again, just onto there. Yeah, right. Let's let's see how that goes. Right. So we'll get the plates again. Jackie's asking asking what the difference is between the first Gemini and Gemini two. So I don't believe there's a huge amount of difference. Gemini 2 has got um, like a little pop-up bit on the back to yeah. like rest a tablet on or something like that. And yeah, I think you can also plug in like to charge up USB devices like that. It has, yeah. Um, the bottom of it's, um, you can get like a turntable for the bottom, but it is quite slippy I think is the best word anyway so you can kind of spin the machine around to get the plates out the back yeah absolutely. I believe it's a little bit quicker and a little bit quieter yeah I think it's definitely quieter yeah I, well in my opinion it is yeah and then let's just bring it in so you can see that back plate Em, if you just put the other like yeah perfect right yeah this is the back here so it's got like that plate on there yeah and at the front as well so it's got bow so hopefully that should help, but it does actually make it a bit, a bit, it's, I like having that plate at the back. Yeah. It's really handy. It just kind of holds it in a little bit longer as well, doesn't it? If you yeah. don't have to catch it. Yeah, like. yeah, it's not going to go on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Hayley said, I'm watching the iPad on top of my Gemini 2 and doing crafting. So it's, yeah, it's got a, a little, obviously stand, but then you can plug in as well. Yeah. You can charge up your devices. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Diane said, my plates haven't bowed as bad as the originals. Um, we are still quite good. They are. Well, we do absolutely hammer ours, don't yeah, we? Yeah, we do. Obviously. And it is the nature of the machine. Yeah. Obviously, you can't expect all that pressure and not have any kind of movement in those plates. It is going to happen. And they are a consumable product. So um, it, it's just one of those things. But um, it, I do feel like it's definitely better yeah, on this I machine do. compared to the other one. Yeah, definitely. They are, they're just, even though they are bowing a little bit, they're a bit less tatty, a bit less yeah. sort of, like they've not cracked, for example. Um, okay, so let's just put this last little star up here so that we've got our five. And then we'll have our sort of stencil, we'll have our background, and then we'll pop, pop that on there. I think this is going to be a seven by seven as well. Oh, we've got a, a question, and I'm so sorry, I don't even want to attempt to pronounce your name. It begins with L. I'll read it out. Are you planning in future to do crafting scissors for left-handed people? Um, we we don't have any plans currently. We do have a few lefties in the office that do use our scissors. Yeah, I was going to say, Emily uses them. Rachel is a lefty, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, my Rachel husband uses. is. Yeah, um, he and likes Pauline them. uses them as well, and she's a lefty. So I, w I think that they're okay. Um, Claire just said my daughter's left-handed and uses the rainbow scissors okay. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that you can get on all right with our, our rainbow scissors. And I'm so sorry, I don't want to attempt to pronounce your name because I know I will get it wrong. I know. There's this I'll let me spell it to you Bex. Okay. You have a think about it. L I E N E. E N Lena? Lena? Yeah. I don't know. I'm sorry if I'm butchering. You'll that. have to let us know. Because <laughs> I don't want to A get little it pronunciation wrong. key. 
Okay, so I'm just going round my little, like I say, if you were to ink through this, you would just get your uh, blending tool here. I haven't actually got any ink with me, but you could just absolutely ink through those yeah, and you would yeah. have that background, wouldn't you? Yeah, definitely. Um, my fault for not thinking that. Um, but again, it just makes awesome. Like, oh, it's so cool, doesn't it? On there. It's amazing. So simple. And it's going to look different, like, where you place yep, it so if you'd maybe done that a5 and you know you'd have two completely different looking yeah. cards wouldn't you oh yeah and to be honest like this was just a piece of cardstock i grabbed i would definitely be doing this a5 and making it twice um so let's just see where we're at with this is this seven yeah okay cool so we've got some foam pads on here we've got some really good coverage and then we'll just chop into this a little bit i Oh, honestly so pretty i know i don't even want to chop it <laughs> it's absolutely gorgeous it's so bright and vivid um and at 2.99 again really ten worth sheets of this all the same 10 sheets gorgeous really worth stocking up on okay so now we've got uh, again if you want to do the shaker technique you can put oh, acetate yeah, behind be cool. all of this um Obviously, if you've never done it before, just start with one aperture and then you can work up to this. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's no rules. It's wherever you're at in your sort of crafting journey. I'm just going to put another couple of foam pads where I'm a bit light on my coverage. And again, you could ju you could just use big strips and sort of weave yeah. around here with this. Super, super fun. Um, so I think you know i had a, i did have i bring i brought in a list and i think i've demonstrated all of them yeah we've done loads of stuff i've just got a few more makes to show you um, awesome this demo we will re remind you of the win it weekly and then of course um we will uh fill you in on tv schedule yes because you are not going to want to miss that oh, today it's so exciting. oh my goodness i'm counting i'm counting down for i cannot wait i cannot tell you today yeah so we we haven't done halloween for quite a long time and last year, obviously, we were new with Hobby Maker, and Hobby Maker were like, "Have you got any Halloween?" And we were like, "No." And they were like, "Oh, it's everyone's asking for it." So this year, we've we've done Halloween, and it it it's is so cool, so cool. We've got a little bit of something for everybody, haven't we? Absolutely. Yeah. So I am all ready to pop that straight onto a card, Love and again, it. no matter where you put it, no matter which bit of your rainbow you're at i mean how good would that be for a first day of school yeah card? yeah so you can cute. put the name on there um so that is all ready to be an absolutely awesome little star card. amazing thank you so you're much Bex. Uh, loads and loads of people have said how much they've really enjoyed all the tips and techniques and everyone just wants to get the dies out now yeah um so i've got some cards to show you just to show you some of the um just all the ways of kind of using them i yeah. love this one here <gasps> with the stars just kind of simple matting and layering but kind of creating a focus at the front of that card That's um, we've got a shaker card little cutie there this one's one of yours Bex uh, this one I love as well just using those nesting uh, torn edge nesting dies to give you that mass and layer it just adds a little something extra doesn't it absolutely um, the Ooh. apertures and the frame there with that uh, duo stitched nesting die this one is cute as well. So a bit like what you did with your pyramid, but just using different layers and laying them up at different heights. Yeah. And to give so a different fun. look. Yeah. Another gorgeous aperture there. Oh, gives you that option geez. to add like a little bit of a floating element just on that same die set. Look at this one. Just so using them to create shape cards, but like with um, three panels. So That's not just amazing. a regular kind of fold up card. We've got some more shape cards here that be made into easels that are just stunning there was that one this one i thought was just a circle at the first i thought oh, that's really cute but again um that's another easel your Ooh. circles obviously going to create really cool rocking cards as well if you score them absolutely um so think about that one this one is beautiful love that shape and that design in the uh the easel there using our wood grain nesting dies can you see all that wooden texture within there that one's really cool isn't it and again with this one so just using it on our rainbow mirror oh that looks fabulous doesn't it doesn't it our hearts oh so cute uh we have another 
easel one here. I think that shape is perfect it's gorgeous, for an easel, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, re we, e either way as well. Obviously, you showed the landscape. the landscape, but either way, it looks fantastic. And then again, using them to, to kind of miss out bits and pieces to create um, that beautiful effect there. There's absolutely loads and loads of ways um, you can use them. Don't forget that incredible, adorable scoreable as well. Just £2.99 for your limited edition. We don't have loads. It will go. Um, it's just you've got to have it it's just incredible value it really is um so that is everything that we've got to share with you oh win it weekly i forgot to repeat yes. that yes uh, so if you'd like to win with the chance of winning our Saint with style pocket pads ultimate collection 2 you need to like share and comment with your answer to our question which of these is a is a traditional halloween drink is it a witch's brew is it b lamb's wool or is it c pumpkin juice let us know what you think the answer is there's been quite a few are we split this week been a little bit a and c yeah okay a and c um it's very interesting and then today natalie is on hobby maker so at one o'clock she has got for you the fabulous trick-or-treat collection oh, it's, it's just so amazing so cool have you ever seen a gnome in a witch's hat i mean you've got to be there at uh, one o'clock this afternoon three o'clock she's bringing you the incredible halloween spectacular moonstone dies um and at four o'clock as well and then at six o'clock um she is bringing you nesting dies they've got their their offer at hobby maker and she's also bringing you some mylar template sheets so tune in and see what it's all about um and then tomorrow uh rebecca and rachel are going to be here with that incredible halloween launch it's just gonna so excited so exciting so exciting so make sure you tune in uh, and watch watch us everywhere you might as well uh, enjoy the rest of your tuesday and we'll see you tomorrow